Uh, my name is Kevin Dowling. I'm the CEO of CARTA. Uh, we're based in the U.S. and build systems. We also provide licensing opportunities for a number of customers, and we have a SaaS or cloud platform as well. Um, I must uh, go through some of these uh, examples. So on the software and licensing side, we have purpose-built SLAM from the ground up. Uh, some of the advantages of CARTA's approach um, do not require looping. Uh, we also um, immediately excise bad data and we provide a very flexible architecture of the overall software for integration purposes. And we'll, we'll show some examples of that as well. On the system side, these are integrated systems that can be typically carried, flown, or driven. Uh, we pro also provide GNSS integration and colorization on our, uh, on our newest product over here, the uh, Stencil Pro. We'll get to see some examples of that as well. Um, on the um, uh, right-hand side, you'll see the Carta Cloud. Uh, this is a visualized scan that's uh, used in our uh, cloud platform where we can import data either from our systems or even uh, raw data from uh, uh, LiDAR and do post-processing on that. And the overall structure of the cloud allows you to collaborate, enhance the workflow through visualization, storage, of course, and, uh, and further processing uh, in, in the not-too-distant future as well. So quite a bit to come. So the advantages of that we see, if you look at dimensional fidelity, as one metric that is what is the accuracy. We typically see center meter often better for in-room accuracies. Uh, visual fidelity is, is quite good, um, both in terms of the point cloud and also for colorization. But one of the, the greatest strengths of this approach, um, uh, even as Stefan showed too, that the capture time and the speed um, gives a number of advantage, a number of uh, distinct advantages, including site access, which in many cases is often limited uh, for, for that time. Uh, coverage, meaning that you're able to get areas that would normally require many, many discrete points to use a typical tripod laser system. So the more complex the environment, the faster and better that coverage becomes. Uh, precision, meaning that the results are repeatable. If you scan the same uh, place again, uh, you'll get the same results. Um, density, meaning good point clouds, very robust, lots of good data. And co-registration, co which really creates an overlaid point cloud uh, with drip that is characteristic of, of the original map. And this makes follow-on workflow much easier as the density and coverage of those points is increased without adding additional noise from drift. So, uh, dr drift is certainly one of the areas that we pride ourselves in. So as we think about the underground, it's uh, almost parallel to the upside down in the, ser the um, streaming series, Stranger Things. Uh, we want to take you and sort of expand the horizons around what, what truly is on the underground. It's really about operating in GPS denied environments where SLAM excels and is uh, constantly getting better. So let's take a look at uh, some examples of that. So this is a limestone mine. Uh, this is in the central U.S. in the Kansas area. Uh, there are a number of reasons for doing this. One was to do an assessment of the cave, uh, these caverns that were man-made, of course. These are Roman pillar mines. Uh, one of the challenges here is that it was uh, flooded, uh, meaning that there's a substantial portion of this area that's actually below water. Typically with uh, the types of devices that all of us have been talking about, the water absorbs the near-infrared frequencies and you get nothing back. So it's essentially a void um, in which nothing exists. This was done completely from a boat in a single scan by navigating these uh, corridors. And in fact, not all of the corridors needed to be mapped or, or um, uh, was not necessary to cover the entire area by going through each and every um, uh, corridor in this mine. Uh, but as you can see in the lower right, it produced a very, very good um, uh, render and uh, this was later used uh, by a number of um, uh, different constituents to sort of uh, assess the, the mine itself. And also it was a bad habitat for an endangered species. Uh, importantly also, this was registered with um, an aerial scan of existing vegetation and other georesources of the exterior of this site. So everything was registered together. Uh, this is a coal mine, um, although coal mines are decreasing rapidly, at least in the U.S. Uh, there's still quite a few that are active. Um, this is this particular one uses uh, conveyor-based mechanisms to transport the coal from the face uh, to outside of the mine. 
Uh, this was just this area of the scan was just done in a few minutes by uh, walking in and around the conveyor up and over this pedestrian bridge that you can see here. And in the round circle in the upper right, you can see the uh, top view of that or the, the plan view. And then the lower view, obviously, is the elevation view. And you can see details of the infrastructure and so forth. So this is used to assess both the equipment and uh, in deeper parts of the mine, the uh, complex surfaces of the mine walls and ceilings. This is a set of man-made caverns uh, in Germany dating back to World War II, located below Middelbau Dora in Germany. This was a stencil scan uh, with a 32-line LIDAR, very good dimensional fidelity. This was scanned in about 10 minutes. Uh, this is a, a collapsed tunnel at the ends of each of these images. You can see the, the collapsed tunnel. So these were done by the same device, walking in and around. No loop closure is required. Um, so it's inherently loop closed because of the accuracy and low drift in the system. And so that collapsed roof, as you can see, was done from two sides of the tunnel in the same scan. Now this is an interesting one. This is actually underground scanning, but doing it from above ground in which we were combining our systems to basically locate um, buried ordnance. This is uh, unexploded uh, munitions that uh, through uh, areas that were used for testing as well as uh, uh, sites that were active um, in, in the past. Uh, we tightly integrated our CARTA stencil with the subsurface sensor in the sense of, in, in, in this instance, a time domain EMI device which then we can then locate it. What you're seeing on the right-hand side is a map of the underground ordinance in this case. Target detections are shown by intensity, the color, and circles are centered in the actual detection, and the crosses are global positions that are provided by stencil uh, later. Uh, this is actually a huge problem worldwide. It's uh, not just in any one location or a few locations. This is all, all over the world. Here's another example of that with the Army Corps of Engineers. There are two reports showing the results from this um, on our, that are on our website and obviously also with the Army Corps of Engineers website uh, showing the successful integration and mapping and localization of this. Uh, this the map on the right-hand side is a rendering also showing through intensity the uh, buried ordinance. The picture is interesting because it shows our system at an angle because we're measuring not just position but pose meaning that we have XYZ, roll, pitch, and yaw. And so anything detected below the device, for example, in the root ball of that tree is also mapped. And uh, uh, there's a lot of very interesting uh, results from that. Forestry too, the canopy often uh, results in GPS denied environments. Um, but in addition, there are obviously natural outcroppings or other, other obstructions, which might include man-made structures. And ground mapping by simply walking this allows you to do that. And this contour map was produced after the full scan um, under the canopy. And then uh, this is in 30 centimeter contours um, of a hillside. Uh, the trees were removed automatically. Um, a sort of a, a, a projection of the uh, topographic um, earth was uh, created and the contour lines drawn on top of that. And in some spaces, while not truly underground, are certainly inex often inaccessible. This is a crawl space below a hospital on the east coast of the U.S. Uh, this is a typically one meter and often less than one meter high. And this was continuously scanned using a remote controlled vehicle. This is not autonomous. This vehicle is remotely controlled. Uh, this RC vehicle, while based on smaller designs used in RC racing, is actually designed specifically for filming and cinematography, but uh, we simply mounted a light source, our stencil device on that, and we were able to map this in a matter of uh, 20 to 30 minutes. So it worked out quite well. Small spaces worked very well with this approach. A tripod scanner would have been, it would have been extremely difficult and lengthy to have mapped in that. And this is a progressive scan and construction where it's changing daily. Um, also, you have um, a very dynamic and active uh, site uh, so there's a lot going on. You can see the spot robot, uh, which is now very popular with a lot of scanning devices that people are mounting to them. But this was in combination with Swinerton, one of the larger uh, U.S. construction companies uh, based in California. This is a medical center where they wanted to uh, scan that uh, site regularly and uh, sequentially over a period of days. It's a nice case study on our website that you can read with more detail on that. I'd say one of the most important things is this idea of co-registration, being able to take multiple sources of data and put them together. Uh, in the one case here, a tripod scanner uh, here in the upper right was combined with a, uh, 
uh, CARTA stencil device, which was just walked around. So there are many instances in which you can combine the two well. In the lower uh, images, you can see uh, photogrammetry from aerial platforms combined with a uh, terrestrial stencil scan that was achieved by walking around. And this combines the benefits of both mapping techniques and the, the subsequent scans are localized to each other. In general, these uh, SLAM systems are proving to be very useful in doing very difficult, almost intractable problems that were impossible uh, just a few years ago. There are still challenges that lie ahead. These types of smooth walled uh, pipes are, are still uh, difficult, but um, uh, you can see massive improvements on, on many cases um, from what uh, was shown earlier um, and uh, as well as um, as well as what CARTA is up to today. So thank you very much and uh, look forward to the Q&A session.